Hi and thank you for watching. In the previous video I shared how the 1290 days that were prophesied in the book of Daniel may be pointing to the beginning of sorrows that Jesus spoke of to his disciples in the Gospels and specifically applying to the church or to believers in the Gospel of Matthew. If you have not seen this video yet, I would suggest that you watch it urgently as time is really short. I also said that I would post another video if I came across any information that would provide additional insight into what I've shared in the previous video that may point to God's church departing from this world before the end of the 1290 days. And I'm happy to provide this update. A brother in Christ, Thomas Ruet, pointed me to a video by brother Jared from Supernatural by Design YouTube channel in which he shares very interesting information about the celestial cycles that have marked very important events over the past century. He also made a video that preceded the one I would like to share with you today, in which he provides a very clear explanation of these cycles. So I would also suggest that you watch that for more information. I will also provide a link to that video in the description below. What I would like to share with you today is a cycle that occurred during the time that Hitler rose to power, and this of course being tied to Haman from the book of Esther, who planned to exterminate God's chosen nation, but was unsuccessful in this endeavor. Hitler, on the other hand, brought about a third of the enemy's vision in this regard, where a third of Israel perished during World War II. And God's were telling us, in Zechariah 13, that when the Antichrist rules, two-thirds of God's nation will perish. And it shall come to pass, that in all the land, saith the Lord, Two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. I believe you will be amazed at what Jared shared in his video, and I will at the end provide some additional information that I believe our Heavenly Father may be showing us relating to the date on which the Antichrist's rise to power may be marked by these cycles. So please watch all the way to the end. Hi Saints, and welcome back to Supernatural by Design. My name is Jared. I pray that you all have been having a wonderful and blessed week and that God's grace and peace is with you. Saints, we have an exciting, exciting show today. And it all stems from a single question asked by a believer. In fact, it completely changed the video production of what I was intending to do. But God is good. And sometimes the Holy Spirit prompts us to move in a different direction. And so here's the setup. Recall in our last video, we talked about the Haman 2.0 Antichrist Eclipse and how that was tied to Hitler as well. And because this eclipse is connected to Haman, that there is a significance to the festival of Purim. And the question that was posed by the subscriber was this. There are lunar eclipses three years in a row on Purim starting 2024, 2025, and 2026. Is this an Esther connection? And immediately, saints, the Holy Spirit said yes. And surprisingly, not just because of the three Purim eclipses in a row, but where this occurred at last time. As this will take us all the way back to the year of 1932 and the rise of Nazi Germany. In fact, what's interesting is that as anti-Semitism was growing in Germany, because we're seeing this pattern again right now, instead of being confined to a country, I would suggest saints, it's why we're seeing the rise of anti-Semitism right now. And why this video is titled, The Purim Setup. And so with that said, thank you for joining me today. Saints, we are very close to the rapture. It could happen at any moment. And I would suggest to you, evidence that you are about to see is triple confirmation of that. It's profound and it's scientific, which means it proves God. But before we get into the meat of this video, if you could do me a huge favor, Saints, and hit the like button, comment on this video, share this video, any and all interactions you all do, beloved, help to support this channel. And I greatly appreciate that. And so with that said, let's begin the show. Okay, so let's briefly recap some 
foundational points from that first video. Beginning with the sorrow cycle, we know that that is an 18 year pattern that all eclipses follow and is tied to each one of these three digit numbers. That's how we know they're all connected. And so we discovered that the sorrows number is the key to unlocking this pattern. And so as we discovered, it's our foundation. Secondly, we discussed the Haman 2.0 Antichrist Eclipse. And if you recall, we showed how there was a connection between this eclipse landing on Hitler's birthday. And being that Hitler and Haman, there's nothing new under the sun, as they both share similar plot lines of trying to wipe out the Jews. And of course, tied to the story of Haman is Queen Esther and the Feast of Purim. And so with those two foundational pieces, let's take a look at the pattern. And so if we go to NASA's website and we go through a lunar eclipse list, if we zoom in to my highlighted dates here, we have March 25th of 2024, March 14th of 2025, and March 3rd of 2026. And back checking, the Feast of Purim lands on each one of those dates. As I have each one of those Purim festivals screenshot next to it. And so praying about the saints, asking, what should I take of this God? He told me to look once again at Hitler and specifically mentioned at the time when persecution began. And for the most part, saints, I've been familiar more with the end part of World War II, not the beginning. So this was new territory for me. But saints, I was shocked. Because after discovering that Hitler came to power on January 30th of 1933, going to NASA's website once again, there was a penumbral eclipse on March 12th of 1933. And saints, that was Purim. But then saints, I noticed that the previous March eclipse, March 22nd of 1932, it turns out that was also a lunar eclipse on Purim. But that these were the only two Purim eclipses in a row. But then I noticed saints, the March 22nd, 1932 Purim Eclipse. Look at the Saros number next to it. It's 131. And where have we seen that before? That, saints, is our Israeli Tetrad. So coming back to the Celestial Countdown, that's this guy. Which means this pattern didn't start in 1949. It actually began one Saros previous because look, saints, coming back to NASA's website, there is our Israeli Tetrad. 121, 126, 131, and 136. Isn't that incredible, saints? That means this is the third instance that Israeli Tetrad has hit significant moments for the nation of Israel. With Hitler and the persecution, the regathering of Israel, and the recapture of Jerusalem. That's three instances not separated out, but in a row. That, saints, is supernatural by design. And is also way too long of a chart to put on our original template. So I came up with this new slide. Call it the Israeli Tetrad Expanded. And it's at this point, saints, that this is where it became really tough. Because the Holy Spirit said, I, I need you to take a look again at the sorrows number for the Haman 2.0 eclipse. And so going to NASA's website once again, Saints, our Haman 2.0 eclipse is the exact same, is the exact same one that occurred the very year Hitler came to power on February 24th of 1933. And so coming back to our Israeli Tetrad expanded pattern, saints, that's the exact same setup. Isn't it interesting that the Holy Spirit led me to the conclusion of this Haman 2.0 and it landed on Hitler's birthday? Because I had no clue at the time that it was the exact same eclipse that also occurred when Hitler came to power. 
Sorrows 129 and hopefully provides another example of why the Sorrows number is very significant. And so revamping the slides here, you can see we had the Israeli Tetrad occur in 1931 and 1932 with a Purim eclipse on one of those eclipses, followed by another Purim eclipse, plus our Haman 2.0 Hitler annual eclipse. And then 10 days after the Purim eclipse of 1933, the first concentration camp opened up. And so, saints, based on these two patterns, 1932 and 33, and where we're at right now, saying something very big is about to happen. Because if Hitler came on the scene the same year the eclipse occurred, what does that tell us about our 420 hybrid eclipse? Considering we have lunar eclipses on Purim, on both of these instances. Well, for one, as believers in Christ, it tells us that the rapture is close, which is exciting news. And two, that the time of Jacob's trouble is also close. And one more unique detail that's important to note is that our last total lunar eclipse of our Israeli Tetrad on 11-8 was the last total lunar eclipse for three years. As the very next total lunar eclipse is our Purim eclipse in 2025. Now, I want to share with you one more thing, connection to this pattern of our Israeli tetrad that came out of this new discovery. And that is this. If we switch to this slide, the Israeli tetrad, seven sorrows to completion, it turns out that our World War II sorrows pattern goes back to World War I which inevitably set up the Balfour Declaration, the British support for a Jewish state. And then 18 years from those lunar eclipses was our Hitler connection, as we just saw. And then 18 years from those eclipses was when Israel was regathered. And then 18 years from those eclipses is when Jerusalem was recaptured. And so for three sorrow cycles in a row, in a row, have all dealt with significant end time fulfillment to bring Israel back to the land. And since our Tetrad in 1967, going three more cycles, what is defined as one sorrows period, puts us at 2021 and 2022. And seeing how it started with three sorrow cycles, technically that's a sorrows period. So we have six continuous sorrow cycles. Now, coming back to our celestial roadmap, 2032 and 2033 is at Christ's millennial reign. Well, 18 years from our Israeli tetrad, the last one of 2021 and 2022, the next time this lunar pattern comes around, it'll be 2039 and 2040, at which point Christ will already be here. And that would also be our seventh sorrow cycle in a row. So coming back to the Israeli Tetrad again, that's why this slide is called Seven Sorrows to Completion. As this has been a continuous pattern, saints, since 1913. 1913. And now referring back to our Purim setup. Saints, this is astonishing. Something very significant, I believe, will happen in 2023. It could be 2024. It could be next week. But because we've seen this Antichrist hybrid eclipse before, when another world ruler came to power, the most infamous in modern history, saints, you know something big is about to happen. Because it even lands, this current one, even lands on his birthday. God is putting this sign in the heavens for a reason. We are very close, very close. And so coming back to the celestial countdown and restacking 
the Israeli Tetrad pattern on the left, with our Purim setup and World War I and World War II, as well as our Jewish feast day aspect when Israel was regathered. And so at this point, saints, the pattern is irrefutable. It's 119 years long. 119. From 1913 all the way to 2032. Isn't that incredible, saints? God is amazing. He has etched this celestial pattern into the night sky. And the fact that we can demonstrate this scientifically points us to you know who? Jesus Christ and his soon and inevitable return. And so with that said, saints, this is where we're going to end the video. I just want to thank you for watching. I'm very humbled by the growth of the channel. As we take a look at these celestial signs together, saints, it gives me hope. And I hope it gives you hope as well. Now, what is interesting in what Brother Jared shared is that there is a solar eclipse in 2023 that falls on Hitler's birthday. That is then followed by three lunar eclipses in the three years following that all fall on Purim. This solar eclipse also has the same Saros number, meaning that it is part of a repeating cycle as one that occurred in the month after Hitler came to power. Now, something that I did not see in Brother Jared's video is that for the same cycle of lunar eclipses that will occur on Purim for three consecutive years following 2023, a similar instance occurred when Hitler came to power, even though these eclipses did not fall on Purim. A set of three lunar eclipses with the same Saros numbers that we see marking Purim in 2024, 2025 and 2026 also occurred for three consecutive years after Hitler rose to power. But here is what is amazing. This series started exactly on the one year anniversary of Hitler's rise to power. The first in this set of three started on January 30th of 1934. If the same pattern applies to the Antichrist, then there is reason to believe that his rise to power begins one year exactly before the first lunar eclipse in this set of three. The date would then be March 25th of 2023. And if the year of the Antichrist's rise is marked by a solar eclipse, with the same Saros number as the one that marked Hitler's rise to power, less than a month after he became Chancellor of Germany, then March 25th, 2023 would once again follow a similar pattern where the solar eclipse that would mark the Antichrist's rise to power once again follows less than a month after this date. In 2023, March 25th, is positioned shortly after Purim and is less than two weeks before the start of Passover. God's word also tells us that before the Antichrist is revealed to the world, the restrainer will be taken out of the way and this is then pointing us to the possible departure of the Bride of Christ before this date on which the Antichrist possibly rises to power. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. How exactly this will play out, I do not know, but I believe this information provides a very valid possibility for the rapture to occur before March 25th of 2023 if the restrainer has to be removed before the Antichrist is revealed to the world. If his rise to power occurs in secret and where he is not yet revealed openly to the world, then the possibility also exists that we may still have to wait until the end of the 1290 days that started on March 11th, 2020. Remember, however, that the Bride of Christ is part of the elect, and God's word says that for the elect, those days will be shortened. And because we are the elect who are judged during the beginning of sorrows, the following passage may very well apply to us because we serve a compassionate and loving Heavenly Father, who does not judge us beyond that which we can endure, and the upcoming days of Hanukkah may be very important in this regard. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened. 
I want to thank my brother in Christ Jared for allowing me to share his video on my channel and most of all our Heavenly Father for revealing this amazing information to us that is tied to his timepiece in the heavens. I hope this will encourage you as we continue to await our blessed hope. And who knows, it may be much sooner than we anticipate. Until next time, or until we meet in the air, God bless.